We'll now learn about the midpoint theorem. So here is a triangle A, B, and C. And we have two midpoints. One midpoint of AB and midpoint of AC. Midpoint of AB I'll put as P and midpoint of AC I'll put as Q. So here it is given to me in triangle ABC P is midpoint of AB and Q is midpoint of AC. If that's the case and I join the midpoints I get PQ. I can say the result PQ is parallel to BC yeah, and PQ is also half of BC. This is the midpoint theorem. I will look into converse of midpoint theorem. For converse again we have a triangle A, B, C and we have a midpoint here one midpoint only that is P but through this midpoint we have a line that is pa parallel parallel to BC now as this line moves we can say it intersects at the other midpoint so where it intersects here is also a midpoint so Q is also a midpoint so for converse given triangle ABC P is midpoint of AB and we have this L which is parallel to BC so the result is that Q is midpoint of AC so see the difference in the result here we had PQ parallel to BC PQ half of B, uh, BC and here the result that Q is a midpoint because what they give was different for, mi uh, for midpoint they give you two midpoints they give you one P and one Q two midpoints are given therefore we say PQ parallel to BC but for converse of midpoint one midpoint is given and one line that is parallel is given therefore we say the other is the midpoint this other point where it intersects here is also midpoint ABCD is a quadrilateral in which P, Q, R, S are midpoints of AB, BC, CD and DA AC is a diagonal show that SR is parallel to AC and SR is half of AC here we will take up or we will take up the triangle T S we will take up this triangle here now in this triangle we have two midpoints given S is one midpoint and R is one midpoint the other midpoint so here we can use a midpoint theorem so in triangle DAC S is midpoint of AD and R is midpoint of DC so if two midpoints are given so now I can say that SR is parallel to AC and SR is half of AC therefore SR parallel to AC and SR equal to half of AC this is by midpoint theorem we'll write this as equation 1 both this now we go to the other side now we'll take up triangle A B C here again Q is a midpoint P is a midpoint in triangle B A C P is midpoint of AB and uh, on the other side we have Q is midpoint 
of BC. So I've given two midpoints are given. So I can use my midpoint theorem. So we'll say PQ is parallel to AC and PQ is half of AC. So we write here PQ parallel to AC and PQ is half of AC. So this is by midpoint theorem. Let's have put equation 2. Now compare equation 1 and equation 2. Earlier we showed SR is parallel to AC and we showed SR is half of AC. So let's go over it again. So we showed that SR is parallel to AC. We write that SR parallel to AC and we also showed that SR equal to half AC. That was our equation 1. And now again I'm showing PQ is parallel to AC and PQ half of AC. So PQ parallel to AC and PQ half of AC. So equation 2. So from here we see from these two from this and this equation we can say that SR equal to PQ because SR is half AC and uh, PQ is also half AC. Comparing we can say SR equal to P Q, and we have proved. The next we have to prove PQRS is a parallelogram. Let's mark PQRS. So here is PQRS. We have to show that this is a parallelogram. So earlier we have already shown that RS equal to PQ already proved or SR equal to PQ has been proved and we saw SR parallel to AC and PQ also parallel to AC that also has been proved. SR parallel to AC proved and PQ also parallel to AC this also has been proved earlier. So from both these we can definitely say that SR is parallel to PQ. SR is parallel to PQ and SR is also equal to PQ. So when it comes to SR they are parallel and equal. And if one pair of sides are parallel equal we can say that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So now we can say PQRS is a parallelogram. And the reason is one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal. So it becomes a parallelogram. ABCD is a rectangle in which P, Q, R, S are midpoints of sides AB, BC, CD and DA show that the quadrilateral PQRS is a rhombus. So given here A, B, C, D is a rectangle and we have the midpoints. PQRS are the midpoints. So here P, Q, R and S are midpoints. P, Q, R, S. We need to show that PQRS is a rhombus. We need to show this PQRS is a rhombus. So given ABCD is a rectangle, a, uh, PQRS are midpoints of AB, BC, DC and AD respectively. To prove that PQRS is a rhombus. So we'll first take these two triangles here and this triangle and show that they are congruent. You know the angles are 90 here because ABCD is a rectangle. So we take triangle SAP and triangle QBP. Now it is given to us that AD equal to 
BC. Why is AD equal to BC? Opposite sides of rhombus, of a rectangle. If AD equal to BC, so half AD will be equal to half BC. The size of rectangle. Now what is half AD? Half AD will be AS and half BC will be CQ. So we'll write that out. So half AD will write AS and for half BC will write BQ. The reason S, Q are midpoints of uh, AD and BC. Now we also know that AP equal to BP and why is AP equal to BP? Because P is given as a midpoint. P is midpoint of AB and we have angles that are 90. That is angle A equal to angle B equal to 90. Properties of rectangle. So those two triangles will be congruent. Here we have S equal to this S, S, S and this is the A. By S, by S, A, S test the triangles are congruent. So triangle S, A, P congruent to triangle Q, B, P by S A S test and if they are congruent by C P C T I can say yes yeah, C P C T C P C T I can say P S equal to P Q by C P C T equation 1 for the second part of the sum we are going to take this triangle and this triangle and prove they are congruent in the same manner. You have 90, 90, here this is 1 is 90, here is 90 and we know these two are equal. CQ equal to BQ because Q is the, here we have Q is the midpoint. Take triangle PBQ and triangle RCQ and we need to show that they are congruent. So first we'll say CQ equal to BQ reason Q is midpoint of BC. Then angle B equal to angle C equal to 90 property of rectangle. Now again here we have full AB equal to DC. So we'll write AB equal to DC cause property of rectangle. Opposite sides of rectangle are equal. So half AB equal to half DC. Now half AB will be till AP and half DC will be RC. So half AB I will write BP. Half DC will write RC. The reason P and R are midpoints. So the triangle will be congruent by SAS test just like earlier. We showed this also equal to here. So by SAS this is SAS and here SAS the triangles are congruent. So triangle PBQ congruent to triangle RCQ by SAS test. So by CPCT, CPCT these two will be equal. So I will write now RQ equal to PQ by CPCT. Earlier we have already shown that SP was equal to PQ and in the similar manner now we can show RQ is equal to RS. Similarly show that RQ equal to RS. So what have we got in the end? We've got earlier PQ equal to RQ. We got PQ equal to RQ. Then we got RQ equal to RS and RS equal to PS. All four sides are equal. If all four sides are equal, 
Therefore, we can say PQRS is a rhombus. Reason all sides are equal. ABCD is a rhombus. PQRS are the points on the sides AB, BC, CD, and DA respectively. Show that the quadrilateral PQRS is a rectangle. So here ABCD is a rhombus and then we have the midpoints P, Q, R and S. We need to show that PQRS is a rectangle. The inner quadrilateral is a rectangle. So it's given ABCD is a rhombus. P, Q, R, S are midpoints of of A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A respectively. We need to prove P, Q, R, S is a rectangle. So this sum goes exactly like the first one. We'll join AC and we'll prove that first PQRS is a parallelogram. So here we join AC. We take up the triangle. From the first part, we take up this triangle. We have two midpoints. Q is one midpoint. R is the other midpoint. So in triangle DAC, S and R are midpoints of DA and DC respectively. Therefore, if they are midpoints by midpoint theorem, we know that SR is parallel to AC and SR is half of AC. So let's write that. SR parallel to AC and SR is half AC. This is by midpoint theorem. Similarly, if we take the lower triangle, again we have two midpoints, P and Q, and triangle ABC, P, Q are midpoints. of AB and BC respectively. So here too we'll have uh, PQ will be parallel to AC and half of AC. And PQ equal to half AC by midpoint theorem. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. On comparing equation 1 and 2, we see that SR is equal to half AC and SR and PQ is also equal to half AC, which means SR equal to PQ. We also know that SR is parallel to AC and PQ is also parallel to AC. That means SR is parallel to PQ. Now PQ and SR are parallel and equal. So here we have PQ is parallel to SR and also equal to SR. If this is a, if this is a condition then we can say that PQRS is a parallelogram. And why parallelogram? Because one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal, the quadrilateral becomes a parallelogram. Pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal, then you get the quadrilateral is, uh, when, uh, is a parallelogram.
becomes a that's a reason now for the second part of the sum we have already shown that SR is parallel to AC we know this right now I'm joining the other diagonal the other diagonal is DP in a similar manner I can also show that RQ is parallel to DB so here I can say this is parallel here and here this is also parallel so I'll just mark this as X here and Y so this inner quadrilateral is also a parallelogram so we'll say join DB and we can show that uh, RQ is parallel to DB by midpoint theorem so in the quadrilateral in the red quadrilateral R Y O X we have R Y parallel to X O and uh, R X parallel to Y O this is all in this red quadrilateral so we can say now R Y O X is a parallelogram also now why have we proved it's a parallelogram now if you look at D B and A C here A C and D B these are diagonals of the rhombus so D B A C are diagonals of rhombus and the diagonals of rhombus intersect at 90 so this is 90 that is the property of rhombus so angle DOC equal to 90 if angle DOC is 90 I can say angle R also is 90 why is angle R 90 because I read this red quadrilateral is a parallelogram so I say angle X R Y is also equal to 90 opposite angles of parallelogram now for the next step now we already have shown this is 90 and we know PQRS is a parallelogram so this is 90 opposite would be 90 here adjacent are 180 so this is 90 and this is 90 now PQRS becomes a parallelogram this is a parallelogram which we have shown earlier with angles 90 hence it is a rectangle so we write PQRS is a parallelogram which has been proved earlier with angles 90 therefore PQRS is a rectangle proved let's summarize this so we had the ABCD was the outer one ABCD uh, was given as a rhombus and we needed to prove that PQRS is a rectangle so in step one we showed that uh, step one we showed PQRS is a parallelogram and then we did the normal method we joined this here we had midpoint QR midpoint so this is parallel and half then on the other side we took PQ midpoint therefore parallel and half and this also were equal so we said PQRS is a parallelogram because we showed SR parallel to PQ and we showed SR equal to PQ so it became a parallelogram then for the second step we further joined the other diagonal DB and then we showed that this was a parallelogram what is this now this is X this is Y and O we showed this figure 
was a pa was a pythogram. That is step two. X Y O R parallelogram. And then in step three, this angle was already ninety because it was the diagonals of A B C intersected there. So we have uh, say Y was 90. If I was 90, then all these angles also would be 90. Right? All the angles got 90. Now, for the same figure here, this was a rhombus, and we joined the midpoints. Now, in this PQRS, this figure, we already have shown that this is 90, that R is 90. And we know it is a parallelogram. We have proved it is a parallelogram. If R is 90, all the other angles also will be 90. So it became a rectangle. This inner one is a rectangle. A parallelogram with all angles 90 is a rectangle. ABCD is a trapezium in which AB is parallel to DC. BD is a diagonal and E is a midpoint of AD. A line drawn to E parallel to AB is intersecting BC at F. Show that F is a midpoint of BC. So all this that is, this is given. We have ABCD parallel DC diagonal F. This is all you will write as given. And this is to be proved. Show that F is a midpoint. So this is how you write your given. This is to prove that F is a midpoint. So we start with triangle here, with triangle A, B, D, this triangle. And we have a midpoint. F is a midpoint. And we have a line that is parallel. So here we are dealing with converse of midpoint theorem not midpoint theorem. For midpoint theorem we require two midpoints. Here we don't have two midpoints. We have a midpoint and a parallel line. So in triangle T A B E is midpoint of A D and uh, E F is parallel to A B. Therefore, I can say, I mark this point as O. Therefore, O is midpoint of DB by converse of midpoint theorem. So, when I produce this further, it meets here at O. It bisects the third side. Another thing I've got to show is this. Uh, we have uh, DC. It was given to us that this line is parallel to AB. Yeah, it is given that a EF is parallel to AB. So by converse, we got O is a midpoint. So let me mark that O midpoint. So here equal. Now I'm going to take another triangle and it's this triangle. That is triangle D, C, B. Again, I have a midpoint. Now, who is a midpoint? O is a midpoint, which I have just proved now. O is midpoint of T, B. And I have this line that is parallel. Now, remember this red line, this line was given parallel to A, B only. E, F is parallel to A, B was given to me. But I know AB is also parallel to DC. Yeah, AB parallel to DC. EF was parallel to AB, but I know AB is parallel to DC. So now, I c therefore, I can say that OF or EF, I'll write it as EF only. Therefore, EF is parallel to DC. So I have a same situation. I have a a midpoint, O is a midpoint, and I have a line that is parallel. So by converse now, I can say that this F is also midpoint. 
so we go ahead so therefore F is midpoint of BC this is by converse midpoint theorem let's go over it again so let's see for what is midpoint theorem a converse of midpoint theorem in converse of midpoint theorem we have a midpoint given so we know this is midpoint and we have a line that is parallel that is given so as you produce this line we say that that line will also bisect the other side so the other side also will be equal this is exactly what we are doing here here first we have taken the triangle this ABC and it was given to us that E is a midpoint was given so here we have and this line was given parallel if this line is parallel if we produce it this also will be midpoint here yeah. we'll mark that O so we know now O is midpoint now on the other side we have another triangle now we'll take this triangle here here again we have O as the midpoint O was already given a midpoint and we have a line that is parallel passing parallel so when we produce it further we will get a midpoint so F will be the midpoint of B C so in this case first step was to show that O is midpoint of DB and the second step is to show that F is midpoint of BC